So you can all see my screen, right? So you can see my screen. Yes, yes, it was. Okay, yeah. okay, good. So uh, I, uh, my name is uh, Deepak Subramani. I have interacted with you yesterday and I've been sending you emails about the uh, research admission process and the capacity of being the convener of the research admission committee. Uh, for the 2022 uh, admissions, right? So I um, I run the lab called Quest, quantifying uncertainty in engineering, science, and technology. That is the name of the lab, Quest Lab. Uh, and uh, in our lab, uh, we focus on um, any any and every kind of process, right? So that is uh, it can be part of engineering, it can be part of science, it can be part of technology. Wherever there is data involved. Wherever there is some kind of physics involved, it's fair game for us, right? So we we have a broad range of applications, right? So starting from um, disease uh, prediction uh, to ocean prediction to atmospheric prediction uh, to computer vision to language processing and anything and everything in between, right? So socio technical systems to engineering uh, technology systems, everything, uh, right? We application wise we do a wide variety of different things. And methodology wise, we focus on developing machine learning algorithms, deep learning algorithms, um, partial differential equation based models, right? so high performance computing systems. And uh, essentially, our work, the domain, right, so that we do work on is computational and data sciences, right? So, way we are involved in big compute, big data, and domain, right? So, let, let me quickly tell you all about like so you, you've been hearing computational data sciences right so big compute big data data all these things you've been hearing so you might be wondering right so where does this come into the picture right so where, how, how is uh, the process of scientific discovery done in these different uh, domains or fields so if we see the process of scientific discovery right so basically there can there are two ways in which scientific discovery is done so one is called as the classical approach and the other is called as the empirical approach right so in the classical approach the question that we ask is how how do things work right? so how does a process happen right so how does the sun rise in the east right? so those kind of questions like how questions are what we uh, ask in the empirical sciences right so we do experiments where right? so we get the data and we ask the question what happened right? so what happened in the past so uh, what happened uh, at this particular time right so those kind of questions that answer uh, what right so those that is what <coughs> empirical science is about so in the classical the how question right so our focus our motivation is to understand phenomenon right so we want to understand how and why things happen right so how why these are the questions that we ask and we want to understand whereas in the empirical sciences right so in the empirical process of scientific discovery we ask the question what happened and observe right so we just observe we collect the data we observe with the experimental systems right so are the real life system we observe and we collect the data and we find patterns or heuristics right? so we find patterns okay this is how uh, every every day there is a frequency at which the sun is rising so we are observing that right? so we are observing that the light comes when sun sun goes up and then light goes out right so when the sun goes away so we can see things when a particular object appears in the sky and we do not see things and that object does not is no longer there in the sky right? so this is something that we observe and we find a pattern there right? we find a pattern that okay there seems to be a frequency, right? So this thing in the sky seems to be coming up very often and it seems to go back very often and then you keep observing that again and again and then you find a pattern, right? So this is how traditionally, right? So millennia before uh, science evolved, right? So the empirical process of observation of what happened. Now, there's also this way of you understanding how things happen without making a lot of observations, right? So, for example, apple fell, and then the, the person asked the question, "How did it happen? Like, why did it happen?" They started to understand, and then felt that okay, with limited data and observation, right? So, you formulated theory, right? So, you formulated laws, right? So that uh, this is how, uh, you know, so, uh, this particular phenomenon happened, and then lot of theory and laws are written. 
traditionally we call this classical approach as science and we call this empirical approach as engineering right so we want to make things work and we want to make have science right? so this is how for years right so for years uh, scientific discovery was being done uh, until the advent of computers right so computers came about in some, somewhere in the 50s and 60s right so that is when 1950s and 1960s right so that is when computing uh, as a process right so became started becoming very popular right so it's just there till from the 30s 40s during the world war time right? so it started and uh, i mean you might have seen the enigma movie right so uh, and the things like that so and 15 cents is really when it started becoming more and more available and uh, useful and as the left part right so the left part of uh, scenarios uh, which is the classical right so the how understanding writing the laws and theories right so these are these became these theories or laws became partial differential equations right so that needed now to be solved so you, earlier right so the solutions were all being done on pen and paper and then people were writing uh, you know classical uh, solutions to these uh, theories and laws and then compute came and we were able to now get computational solutions numerical solutions to these theories and laws and we were able to make predictions right so by our classical understanding process similarly lots and lots of data were being collected right so we have like everything is smart now right so everything is smart and uh, we have we have smart watches we have smart tv we have smart fridge we have smart ac everything is smart right so and internet connected devices collect a lot and lot of data that now it is possible to form heuristics and patterns just from observing this data through the empirical sciences and that is what led to the big data boom right so lots and lots of data is now available that you can use computers to algorithmically or programmatically find patterns and heuristics and you use that for the betterment of humanity right so you to make predictions and make make uh, things work for us right so both these aspects right the classical approach or the theoretical approach or the empirical approach or the ob observational experimental approach both of them got a big boost right so when compute started coming and compute is what bridges right so these two uh, silos of knowledge discovery scientific discovery yeah, that in the last few years right so last 5 to 10 years the computational and the data sciences have come together and now we have the computational and data sciences which work on both 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 of these different aspects so why do we want to make predictions right? so why we want to make predictions is predicting natural system is very important right so see the cyclone right so you see in this picture uh, cyclone uh, is going by and this, these are satellite pictures see, these are observations from satellite and what we really are interested in is to make a prediction of where the cyclone is going to head and hit hit the coast so then we can save the life of people right so we can save the life of people on the left what you see are the ocean currents that get go right so we have an understanding of the ocean we have an understanding of the atmosphere as so we are, we know how the fluid flow happens in these these scenarios and in the classical approach we have partial differential equations that describe how this uh, ocean flow or the atmospheric flow happens right fluid flow or how it happens classical approach compute is there so we have high performance computing infrastructure we can solve those partial differential equation using numerical methods and make predictions and uh, do better but as you saw in the right picture right so we now have lots and lots of data as well and we have satellite data that requires us to use algorithms from computer vision that requires us to use algorithms from spatio temporal data analytics the um heuristic approaches that became very very popular in the last few years now those have to be married to the classical traditional approaches of the computational sciences and a new field right so the interdisciplinary field of computational and data sciences has emerged which has a tremendous opportunity right so traditionally you 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 solved the pde or you did uh, computer vision now you have the opportunity to apply computer vision to apply language processing tools and techniques that were developed for specific purposes in socio technical systems into the physics realm right so into the realm of the traditional classical physics and explore and expand right so on the uh, on, on our understanding of the science and to make predictions
another important thing so we, we work on that part right so predicting the natural systems by combining computational sciences and data sciences and bringing bringing them together now another part that we work on is artificial intelligence right so we we work a lot on giving intelligence to autonomous underwater vehicles right so these are robots that go out and explore the ocean so we we develop algorithms we develop uh, intelligent algorithms based on reinforcement learning principles uh, we based on dynamic programming based on gpu computing and all of these things right so we 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 develop algorithms that impart intelligence into autonomous robots that navigate very very difficult environment right so the environment itself makes this and it makes these robots move along and that is an important application of autonomous underwater vehicle and path planning that we we do right so this is another area of our our research in artificial intelligence and using reinforcement learning to make make predictions of that so if you think about it there are majorly our ours is a interdisciplinary group that majorly works at the intersection of big compute that is pdes so solutions of pdes high performance computing right so solutions of partial differential equations big data that right? is data science right? so first is the computational science second is the data sciences right so big data working with uh, lots and lots of satellite imagery working with lots and lots of environmental sensor data right so spatial temporal data Uh, image data uh, using techniques from computer vision using techniques from natural language processing right so using using data science machine learning deep learning techniques combining them with computational techniques right so pd solutions right so finite volumes finite elements right so bringing them together and one or the other of the domain knowledge so, so our domain as i said right so as a lab and me myself right so i i delve in a lot of different domains as students who come to the lab each student works on one of the domains right so one of the domains based on their interest they pick it up over time and then they they spend this time the first 6 months to one year they spend the time and understand and think that okay this domain i like exploring and and they develop deep expertise in data sciences computational sciences and that particular domain and solve problems right so that's typically the path which students take and when especially working in these kind of interdisciplinary area so our our problems are all contemporary they are all uh, dynamic right so in nature right so nothing is set in stone usually students come explore and then they find that okay this is something that is interesting to them this is something that is interesting to me and then we work together and then they say okay they learn the uh, machine learning part they learn the deep learning part they learn the pd part they learn the solution part they abstract out they get the idea then they put it together and then then they solve right write papers graduate right? so this is typically how uh, students work in work in our group so what are the projects available right so for us uh, we i am desperately looking for or rather very much looking for people to work on physics based deep learning right so in in this uh, we we have uh, the kind of expertise that you will build over time right so is in deep neural networks and fluid flow pdes partial differential equations and using deep neural networks so what are the skills that you need to start off with you you need to know little bit of probability linear algebra and programming right so that's what we will test in the interview and what i expect you to learn over time right so the first one one year or so is to learn deep learning inside out right so become expert in in deep learning and have advanced knowledge of turbulent fluid flow right so you must have interest in fluid flow right so if you don't have interest in fluid flow turbulent fluid flow this pro- problem might you will face difficulties later on so you must have interest to learn that okay? so this is one uh, project that we have physics based deep learning then we have reinforcement learning for autonomous underwater vehicles right? so we develop new reinforcement learning optimization algorithms so you are you will at the end of the project right so you will be writing code in cuda mpi open mp and develop reinforcement learning algorithms right so again the skills needed to start off with you need to know a little bit of probability linear algebra and programming right so and what you will learn at the end of your phd you will be an expert in reinforcement learning right so you will have a high level of expertise in that and in high performance computing gpu programming right so you will have expert level knowledge in 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 that as well right so this is a project another project that is available 
and another project is computer vision for satellite oceanography right so we want to develop new vision transformer architectures deep learning architectures for ocean satellite imagery so uh, the data that we will be using is uh, ocean data right so ocean satellite data uh, and uh, to start off with the skills that are needed is probability linear algebra tensor flow programming right so basically that you can pick up even after you get admitted but uh, due for the interviews we will be looking mostly at probability linear algebra and your programming logic right so how do you think through it and at the end of your phd right you will be experts in the cnn vision transformer architecture right so basically computer vision applied to uh, satellite imagery and image data analysis right so this is a skill that is needed right so it's somewhat you know uh, you need to load the data correct it put it back right? so all of those uh, it's it's a job right so it's somewhat manual and you may need to automate it and things like that right so this is what is needed in that third third project the fourth project that is available now is to develop transformer architectures for spatio temporal data analytics right so this is a deep learning project you will be using graph neural networks learning and using graph neural networks and develop this particular architecture called as transformer architecture right so which is uh, spa vastly becoming popular in in several several applications in vision and language uh, and we want to try to use that for spatio temporal data analytics problems right so in the environment uh, domain that that we will do so again the skills to start off with probability linear algebra programming a uh, little bit and then at the end you will be an expert in spatio temporal analytics uh, and of course high performance computing uh, you will need right the gpu so that you can uh, use that uh, right so for the project and the finally the fifth uh, project that uh, we have is ai in educational technology right so you want to develop new edtech uh, skill scoring metrics uh, recommendation system how can we use ai for improving teaching and learning uh, processes right so machine and deep learning so you will uh, develop expertise in that so uh, i uh, have co-founded a startup uh, called as centic that is involved in educational technologies uh, and uh, we uh, develop uh, we want to develop um, research solutions right so ai in educational technology and we want to do that so one project in that direction uh, is is also available currently right so um, another question right so that i typically get is like what are the background of students and things like that right so i'll just quickly go through who my current students are right so who are they working in my group currently in in research uh, student positions right so uh, the senior most student is rohit choudhury he is a pmr of uh, candidate uh, he, he has the pmr of scholarship um, he is in the fourth year uh, he did his btech in mechanical engineering from nit durgapur and joined directly right so cfti dot joined directly and with pmr we joined then uh, there's a third year student abhishek p is also a pmr of candidate uh, and uh, he actually has a btech in computer science uh, from uh, andhra university and uh, mtech in climate studies from iit bhubaneswar he is working on the interdisciplinary areas of um, ocean predictions deep learning machine learning right so using that for uh, uh, ocean data analytics uh, then another student is uh, in her third year anjali in the third year uh, sorry second year uh, she uh, did her btech uh, and mtech both in civil engineering btech she did in kannur uh, i think kerala university or kannur university as uh, there she did uh, and mtech she did in iisc right so in civil engineering of iisc she did her mtech uh, and uh, Uh, she uh, works on uh, agent based modeling right agent based modeling uh, using probability uh, and her uh, passion right really is in um, uh, working with uh, you know uh, problems that are related to uh, human wildlife conflict right so uh, elephants uh, every year every year if you see the news right so you see things like okay elephants are dying or elephants are killing people right? so human wildlife conflict is important so recently one movie also came right so share me in which uh, you know human wildlife conflict was important uh, aspect so she uh, works on those kind of problems that's what she likes likes doing and then is used the knowledge of probability machine learning deep learning right so satellite imagery and formulated a problem and working towards uh, solutions in that direction right so then i have another student sumanth uh, who did his uh, mtech in mechanical uh, mechanical engineer no mtech in applied mechanics 
B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering. He is M.Tech person from IIT Madras and B.Tech from JNTU. So he is working on the physics-based deep learning problem, right? So that's that's what he is doing. And then I have another student, Akanksha. She's a PhD student in third year, uh, working on using uh, deep learning methods in time series, spatiotemporal data analytics problems, right? So rain, rain gauge and uh, finding uh, anomalies in that, uh, detecting that. She's actually mathematics MSc, right? So BSc MSc mathematics uh, MSc is from IIT Kanpur. So these are the current uh, research students who are uh, working in in the lab, and uh, two have recently graduated. Uh, one. Uh, both are mtech research students right so our, our lab started in 2019 uh, january 1 of 2019 so it, it's in the fourth year so that is why the senior most student is the fourth year student uh, in between two uh, mtech research students have graduated just this year right so they, they took each of them took about three years to complete the mtech uh, research uh, right so one is devyani she is currently placed in ibm research lab um, she her btech is in csc and she worked on uh, computer vision problems for satellite uh, oceanography, right? So uh, she has one paper in uh, TGRS, right? So transaction in geoscience and remote sensing. Um, so when, when she started off, right? So she had no idea about what the domain was and what it was. Right? So she came here, picked up the skills, but uh, her, her basics was all in probability and uh, linear algebra and programming, right? So that's how students evolve over here, right? Then I had another student, Srikant, who just graduated and he's uh, got admitted to Georgia Tech to pursue his PhD in computational engineering. He actually made a complete domain switch. He was in textile textile engineering, right? So in textile engineering at uh, the uh, B.Tech uh, at IIT Roorkee, right? So and uh, he he joined us and in three years he's completed his M.Tech research. He's mathematically sharp, right? So very very good uh, and uh, in 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 analyzing developing algorithms, right? So he, he worked more on a theoretical project, right? So and computational project and he has a paper in um, the, one of the leading uh, numerical methods journal and he has got admitted to Georgia Tech. So in, in other words, right, so there is a um, motley of students, right? So a lot of backgrounds, right? So it really doesn't matter what we are looking at is really your capability of uh, thinking and your passion, right? So uh, another advice uh, I, I have heard uh, many people say so. I, I myself, right? So I, I did uh, my B Tech uh, from IIT Madras, uh, 2007 to 12, um, and I went to MIT to do my uh, PhD, right? Master's in Institute of Technology, and then I graduated 2017, and thereafter I've been working at IIC, right? So uh, as uh, as a faculty. So one of the advice that we used to give, uh, even even when we were at MIT, and um, the advice that I also received is that. Uh, uh, you don't worry too much about uh, the background, right? So from which you come. So I, my B.Tech is in mechanical engineering, right? So I, I did a B.Tech in mechanical engineering. My um, MS uh, in the U.S., right? So it was in computation for design and optimization, right? So that was the name of the degree, right? So and my PhD is in mechanical engineering and computational engineering. So at that time, is when I was doing PhD, the CDS was forming, right? So in the sense that computation and data science coming together. And degrees were starting to be given around the world, and we were one of the first batches of mechanical engineering and computational engineering. So now there is an established program, right? So with a few years behind it of computational and data science, you get a PhD in computational data sciences directly. So this is an amazing time to be alive, right? So to be students uh, and to really explore these opportunities that IAC provides you. Right. So and IAC is unique in the sense that, you know, you have this CDS department, which is really an interdisciplinary group of students and group of faculty who come with diverse experience, diverse backgrounds and really right, it's a great, great place for you to grow as a person. You must also think of your PhD as a phase of self discovery. Right. So you are discovering what what it is that you like. Right. So what what is what what is what are you passionate about and doing research right so allows you to do that yesterday professor yogesh uh, described to you what we mean by doing research right so and he made a very nice presentation so if you did not catch that yesterday right so i would request that you go uh, and watch that youtube youtube video right so that that is what uh, we uh, i would recommend you to do um, and uh, see, research is not like so. If you go to Amazon, right? So, and you look at the comments that come, 
uh, people will write so let's let's take some phone right so some one plus phone or whatever it is right? people will say i did a lot of research and i found that this phone is the best right so pe people try that day. that is not what we mean by research right so that is just searching searching is not research right so re re research is about what professor yogesh described to you yesterday right so finding where there are gaps in the human knowledge and taking things from that right so that is what uh, another piece of advice that i want to try to give you uh, and uh, hopefully right so if you are interested uh, in the kind of work that we do please do uh, apply to our lab uh, and um, prepare well for the interviews uh, and get selected right so hopefully i can uh, see you um, on the other side so let me quickly look at a couple of questions we have about 3 or 4 more minutes um, uh, chosen are there job opportunities just for the computational skills uh, so you mean uh, after graduation right so definitely right so there are a lot of job opportunities and we ensure at least in our lab right so we ensure that you pick up sufficient employable skills right so employability of students is very very important for me personally and we ensure that you learn enough to in such a way that you get get placed right so get get a you can start a research career right so you can start a, in any kind of career right so that we take a lo lot of uh, effort in ensuring that happens right so another question uh, from utkarsh uh, does your lab also work on developing machine learning methods uh, yes we do that right so that's what we that's exactly what we uh, the first project that i was talking to you about right so that's what uh, we we do so my group we don't work on quantum computation right so just computation itself we, we are not able to understand and get wire quantum right so that is we are not not doing that okay sorry uh, yes yeah, sajay sri you had a question you can unmute and uh, ask okay okay so that was good um, so i will uh, stop over here right so if you have any further questions you feel free to write to our students also right so you can find their names on uh, on our uh, website right so my my website you can find the name you can write to any of us uh, if you have questions uh, about the kind of work that we do and other things like that for what to prepare for interview and other things so please don't write to us right so it is there on the brochure already Uh, and i have explained to you what to prepare for the interview yesterday right so uh, um, that you take and look look into that if you think that whether you um, whether we are a good fit for you right so that uh, if that is uh, something that you want to know more please do write to us i will be more than happy to uh, answer any of the questions that you have right so please uh, do 